Thank you for the prayer, the prayers that we've just had. Um, um, I pray that God is leading us this morning. Um, before we start, shall we have a word of prayer? Our kind and loving Father, we humble our hearts and our minds to you this morning, thanking you, O Lord, that you've woken us up. Thank you, O Lord Jesus, that you we can lead, be led by you. We open our eyes and we see the salvation of the Lord, the things that are coming upon this earth, dear Lord. Help us to, to know and to acknowledge your second coming because it is so near, even at the door. Lord, give us spiritual eyes, spiritual understanding, so that where we are going, dear Lord, we are walking on the right path. So bless each and every one of us now this, this morning as we go into your word and see um, the kingdom of God is at hand and how we are to be as your people. Be with us now. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So before we start, um, I'd like to sing um, number 518, Standing on the Promises. And it has three verses. I'll do the first verse and one for the second and third. I'll do the second. Thank you, Sister Dorothy. Anyone for the third? I can take it, sis. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, Standing on the promises of Christ my King, through eternal ages let his praises ring. Glory in the highest I will shout and sing, standing on the promises of God. Standing, standing, standing on the promises of God my Saviour, standing, standing. I'm standing on the promises of God. Standing on the promises that can that cannot fail. I I have lost I've lost the tune. Sorry, can somebody else sing it, please? Standing on the promises that cannot fail. When the howling storm of doubt and fail our sail, by the living word of God I shall prevail, standing on the promises of God. Standing, standing, standing on the promises of God, my Saviour, standing, standing. I'm standing on the promises of God. Standing on the promises of Christ the Lord. Bound to him eternally by love's strong cord. Overcoming daily with the spirit sword. Standing on the promises of God, standing on the promises, standing on the promises, standing on the promises of Lord my Saviour, standing on the promises, standing on the promises, I'm standing on the promises of God. Amen. 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 Yes, we are standing on the promises of God because in the whole book, in the, the, the Bible that he's given us, the word, it is full of his promises. So yesterday we looked at um, the fulfillment of the God's time, the time. What is the fulfillment? The fulfillment is when he came into this world to um, begin his, his ministry to fulfill um the gospel in John the Baptist came and said, the time is at hand, repent, repent. And, um, you know, we have to prepare ourselves. The virgin, the five foolish virgins didn't prepare themselves. Yeah, they they were unaware of the 
the scriptures. Simeon and Anna, they were in the temple, but they recognized the unfolding of the, the um, what was happening in front of their eyes, and um, and even the 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 Sanhedrin, they heard, they heard the word because they came to John and said, "What must we do?" and and John called them, "Oh, you generation of vipers," you know. Um, it was also said about the pastors that you know rejected the word. They are rejecting the word, and they are not preaching this to the congregation. You know that the 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 um, time is fulfilled. The time is at hand. So they they are breathing on Holy Spirit on Holy um, Spirit to the to the congregation, um, giving them false false hope. And we also spoke about um, the days of Noah. You know, uh, Noah preached for 120 years. And still, you know, even his family were not saved because everyone is looking to the scientist. Everyone is looking for people outside. Everyone is not, they're not, um, they weren't ready, you know. Um, and it was 120 years. We've We've got, we've had longer. Yeah, and it was also said, faith come by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Yes, and we are living in the days of Noah at this time. Yes, we can see so much that's happening, so much building, so much planting, so much, so much of everything that is going on. Yes, and we also spoke about sighing and crying for the abomination of what's happening, um, the condition of the church, um, and. Um, many of the, the pastors who are preaching to, to the people, to the congregation, don't know the message and they're not preaching the message. So the congregation is all sitting there and they're all sleeping and they're all slumbering. And he's also said that we mustn't be ashamed of the gospel because it is of Jesus Christ. Yeah. And the prophecies, the prophecies must be fulfilled. The prophecies are, you know, from the time of Jesus. From the time of Jesus coming, yeah, we recognize that the things were unfolding during that those times and they are happening now, you know, but people are oblivious to what is happening and what is what is going on. Yeah, and um um and we also spoke about um the <clears throat> we also spoke about the 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 jealousy and the distrust, the distrust of the, the, the leaders, the leaders in the in the church as well as um as as in those days. Um, you know, people are backbiting, you know, they have um there's a lot of um what do you call them? There's a lot of things that are happening in the church, especially on a Sabbath day. Yeah, people are having meetings and they are backbiting and there are so much arguments we heard from Sister Sister Dorothy about what is happening in her church. You know, things are happening and Satan is stirring so much now, you know, but we must prevail because God is still with us. I remember yesterday there was um there was people um certain of um Dor Sister Dorothy, I think, wanted to say something, or anyone else had anything else to say from yesterday? Yes, please, uh, Sister Alin, thank you. Thank Good you. morning, everyone. You know, I, the, the second paragraph from this reading, as you were actually, you expounded on it about how they were, you know, the, the, the leaders were jealous and there was so much going on and then you know when we have these um kind of disagreements and fights in the church you know she says there it had ripened into open hatred you know you can hate and still be in denial that you don't hate your brother or your sister you don't speak like that you don't shout like that in god's church on the sabbath unless there is a kindled hatred in your heart 
against that person. Let's not be deceived. You know, the Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, we all know it, the mouth speaketh. How could we speak like that to each other? How could we? We had hatred in our hearts. We need to work to ask the Lord to help us to work in our hearts. The way we handle things with us in the church with one another. Lest we uh, we, uh, we we give our enemy, you know, hold of our hearts. I was also thinking how this led them, you know, if they had honored, if the if the leaders had received Christ, so they hardened their hearts and they 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 silenced their consciences that Christ was the sent one, and their hearts were hardened. Every time that God's people reject light, clear, straight light from heaven, darkness hovers over God's people. May it not be any of us. He says there. But Israel knew not the time of her visitation. And I, 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 I think here she may have been talking about the destruction of, of the, uh, um, of the, uh, you know, when Christ prophesied about the destruction of the temple in Jerusalem and when, you know, uh, when the enemy came and destroyed and, and destroyed and killed so many of them. The, uh, that judgment that came upon them for rejecting the Savior. This is what I'm seeing in this small, small paragraph here. And for us, there is a big lesson to learn. So when we shut our consciences to the light that God has given us to prepare us for his second coming, we are in darkness because even though we profess to be to have the light and to be in the light, we will be caught unaware by the second coming of Jesus Christ. We'll be caught unaware because Israel, when they did this, shut out the light, you know, they didn't know what was coming upon them. But Christ has prophesied, and in fact, in 70 AD, what happened? The enemy came and did the work of destruction. So for us, we are to keep watch because, as you said, if the ministers are not preaching the message, the heralds of the coming of Christ from 1844, that's when we were supposed to bring the message, the three angels' messages, you know, this light to the world. And if our leaders are no, our ministers are not uh, talking about it, we have to go and eat this bread elsewhere. You have to go to trusted channels and read present truth so that we can prepare. Many people have, have been advised not to go on the internet and watch present truth speakers and leaders and oh, they are against the church. I'm telling you, I will go and eat bread where I find there is bread of life. I will not allow any leader to tell me what I can listen to and what I cannot. I will, by God's grace, go and feed where I feel I need that food for that hour. May we all give our allegiance to the lamb and not to the man, a sinful man. Christ is our master. Let's work for the master by his grace. Thank you. Amen, Sister Dorothy. Thank you. Yes, you know, um, those people, they chose Barabbas. Yes, in the place of Christ. Yeah, but it's, it is said that um, the cruelty of Barabbas, that Satan, will stand as long as time should last. When we want food, we go and find food, yeah? So why should we sit down and be hungry? Why should we sit in the same place and be hungry? Go to find it. That's where you, that's how you grow. Because if we don't eat, you die. So yes, Sister Dorothy, I understand YouTube has a lot of people that will 
are false prophets and, and will tell you a lot of foolish this, yes, but you should know, differentiate the, the truth from the error because that is what it is said about um, God's word. You know, we must differentiate what is truth because pe people will be deceived. There are going to be deception. Sister Kezia, go ahead, please. Uh, thank you, Sister Andine, and good morning. Yes, I was just thinking and meditating after yesterday's reading. You know, when Sister Ruby said, um, you know, the pastor was saying that we we are not, we will still continue to sin. We uh, only when, when, um, when we are sealed and we, we, that's when we will not be able to sin. And I was just thinking, you know, um, this message is so dangerous because um, that makes people really not to show people that they have under they've we have not understood the gospel of Christ. Um, Christ came to save us from sin, and every time he healed anyone, even that woman, he said, "Go and sin no more." Christ came to save us from sin. Sin is transgression of God's law. So when we say we will continue to sin until Christ comes, we are saying that we are not being, we are not, we, Christ is not able to save us from our sin. That means we are saying the spirit of rebellion in us, we don't want it to go. But it's something which we need to be praying for to say, this spirit of disobedience, spirit of rebellion, please break it, Lord, so that it is only your voice I'm listening to, not the voice of the enemy. And if we say we are going to continue to sin until Christ comes and we are translated, we are fooling ourselves because a sin costed the Son of God um, his life, it means that the death of Christ, we have not looked at it. We, we don't care about repentance because the repentance, when we have repented, when we look at what we have done and we are sorry, it steps to Christ says, um, we will not go back to those things which we were doing. But if we are not remorseful of what we are doing, then we'll keep doing the same things. We'll still go to this to the church and we still have a hate. We still have, a, you know, we we still uh, look at, uh, you know, all those things which are happening in there. That means there is lack of repentance amongst us. And it's a really serious cause of concern because that means we don't believe uh, what you know that Christ came to save us from those things. When we believe, we will do. We will keep His commandments. When we believe from the heart, not from our lips, no, but from the heart. Thank you. Thank you, sister, sister Tasia. Yes, you must believe from the heart. It is the heart that that God looks at. It is the heart that that he is um he will judge from um our heart and um our mind and you know the pastors that are, are preaching all these and we have new people coming into the church who don't know who don't know the book who don't know God and they are preaching these things and you know they will believe so they will always be in their sin because they have no other um, outlet. They don't know anything else apart from what is being preached. And the, the pastors really need to tell the people that, um, you know, don't believe what I say. Go and check it out for yourself. I've never heard a pastor say that. You know, don't believe what I say. Check it out for yourself. Do you have your Bibles? Open the Bible and read your Bible. People are going to church these days with phones. Yeah, even the Bible, even the... Um, even the, the 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 communion is with with a phone or a laptop or or things like that. You know, the devil believe 
God's word and he trembles. So how are we supposed to be? What are we supposed to do if, if um, you know, things are happening like this and, and pastors and, and preachers are telling us all, all manner of things? But we still have a God and he still watches over his children. So we just thank him for that. Is there any other comment? So we can move on to the next chapter, the next um, paragraph. Okay, can I have someone to read the next paragraph? The Sanhedrin had rejected Christ. The Sanhedrin had rejected Christ's message and was bent upon his death. Therefore, Jesus departed from Jerusalem, from the priests, the temple, the religious leaders, the people who had been instructed in the law, and turned to another class to proclaim his message and to gather out those who should carry the gospel to all nations rejected by the ecclesiastical authorities in the days of Christ so it has been rejected in every succeeding generation again and again the history of Christ's withdrawal from Judea has been repeated when the reformers preached the word of God they had no thought of separating themselves from the church, but the religious leaders would not tolerate the light, and those that bore it were forced to seek another class who were longing for the truth. In our day, few of the professed followers of the reformers are actuated by their spirit. Few are listening for the voice of God and ready to accept truth in whatever gifts it may be presented. Often those who follow in the steps of the reformers are forced to turn away from the churches they love in order to declare the plain teaching of the word of God. And many times those who are seeking for light are by the same teaching of light to leave the church of their fathers that they may render obedience. Should I stop? Yes, please. Thank you very much, Sister Judith. Thank you for your reading. Yes, um, we see that, um, you know, uh, the, the message was given to someone else. And this is gonna, what's going to happen in, 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 in the days of, in these days. You know, the message is going to turn to someone else. Um, the message was given to the Gentiles. You know, remember when, um, I think it was Peter that was on the roof and he was, he was, um, he had that vision and it was told that, you know, um, what God has blessed, he mustn't call anything common or unclean. Yes. And this is what's happening in the world now. Yeah. They are multitude of people, whether they're, they're um, young, old, black, white, um, LGBTQ, everybody must know the gospel. Everybody must be told you know, and and the days that um, the professed followers, the reformers, you know, they listened, they heard the message. Yes, they heard the message because the, their pastors probably weren't preaching that message. And when they heard that message, they were all pricked in their heart and wanted to know more. But, you know, people um, like the pastors, they're always trying to dampening down the message, making the message softer making it acceptable, you know, peace, peace, when there is no peace. Sister Hope, go ahead, please. Uh, thank you, Sister Erlene, and good morning all. Uh, indeed, when we started that paragraph, uh, we can see that also Christ was having the same problem uh, in the church. Uh, indeed, the, the truth was not... Um, uh, taught, and uh, it, it just took me back to Matthew twenty three, when he was talking to the, the to the to, to the Pharisees, and there where he says that uh, uh, chapter twenty three of Matthew, and verse thirty six, he says, "Verily I say unto you, all these things shall come upon this generation." O oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou hast killed ki killed uh, the prophets and 
and stone, stonest them which are sent unto thee? How often would I have, I have gathered the children together, even as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings, and ye would not. Behold, your house is left unto you desolate. And I, sh and uh, for, sorry, for I say unto you, you shall not see me henceforth till you shall say, blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. The history is only repeating itself. As we read that paragraph, that, that, um, uh, that Sahindran themselves, right? Christ had to over look them, right? He says there that, that, that uh, 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 the Sanhedrin had rejected Christ's message and was, and was bent upon his death. Therefore, Jesus departed from Jerusalem, from the priest, from the temple, the religious leaders, the people who had been instructed in the law and turned to another class to proclaim his message and to gather out who should carry the gospel to all nations. That's what Sister Dorothy was saying. Time is going to come. The messages that will not bring us closer to God, the spirit of the living God will, is still working and he's going to gather his own people together. And he said so. He will gather his people out of these churches where they are. Because he's going to bring them to one fold. Yes, there are those who are Gentiles or those who, be, who have not the full knowledge that we have outside. There are those in other churches. But also in our own church, God is going to raise up people who will have the present truth, who will be um, in, instructed by the Holy Spirit to come together. And he did it also. When the when when um, in the upper room experience, when the Pharisees there, when the scribes there, no. God gathered His people, the one hundred and twenty together, and He poured His Holy Spirit upon them. It's the same message. God is going to gather His people with this present truth message that needs to be proclaimed. So we're so thankful. We're so thankful to God because Christ went through it. Right? The Millerites went through it, and we have to go through it because we are the last generation to give this message. Amen. Yes. Amen. Thank you, Sister Hope. Yes. You know, um, I read a quotation, William Miller. He said that I knew there was a wrong, but I didn't know where to or how to find it. And he looked. He looked, he searched, and he searched for a long time, but he found the message and he found the truth. And when he did um, find the truth, he went and proclaimed the truth to, to people. You know, sometimes we um, we know the message and sometimes it's we the courage that we need to go out and, 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 and tell others. But we need to pray, as Sister Hope always say, Pray, pray. Christ is listening. Pray, pray to God. He will acknowledge and, you know, learning the truth and having the knowledge. But we must ask for wisdom, ask for wisdom, and God will give it to us liberally. Um, Sister Dorothy and then Sister Kezia. You're muted, Sister Dorothy. Oh, uh, thank you, Sister uh, Sister Aline. Yes, this paragraph is just packed with things that are happened then and things that are happening now in our churches. You see, uh, as you were speaking there, uh, Sister Hope, I <clears throat> I remembered regular and irregular lines. You see, the regular lines are shutting out the, the light and 
Many ministers don't even know how to preach. They, I don't even think they make an effort at all to preach present truth. And instead of allowing people who can preach present truth to its members, they, you know, they, they don't. Some churches do. In my previous church, we used to have present speakers from time to time. But some churches, there is nothing where I am, there is nothing, nothing at all. So here, we are told here, the religious leaders would not tolerate light, the light. So those who, and those that bore it were forced to seek another class. So we, as as, uh, as Sister Hope was saying, we have to. We have to pray and follow Christ. You know, we have to keep our eyes on, on, the, on the star, on the light. You know, uh, it's easy to follow man and actually without realizing you're following man. Let's follow Christ. You know, Ellen G. White said something which I always remember. She said, if unity could be secured only by the compromise of truth and righteousness, she said, then let there be difference and even war. So the war she's talking about here is spiritual war. I believe it's spiritual war she's talking about. Even though we, you know, even though uh, people who embrace present truth and the writings of the prophet, we are to ask God for wisdom on how to fight this war. So if you feel you can't work in your church because the light is being shut out, then find people of like mind and join forces and, and go for Jesus. You know, Jesus was hated and those who love the truth will be hated. So we should cease from being men pleasers so that, you know, I can be seeing really in with the, everyone in the church. It's never going to happen. The Bible says that is a master, is a servant greater than his master. We are not greater than Christ. We see how their hatred for him was so, you know, how it ripened to a point where they wanted to kill him, throw him off the cliff. These guys, they had hatred for Christ. So you and I will never be loved in church as long as we carry the present truth and the torch uh, of Christ's light to uh to the world you you're never going to be loved so we need to stop this uh, you know pleasing attitude one moment we are loyal to Christ the other moment we see darkness bad things happening in the church wrong things and then then it's like we are endorsing and it's like oh let me put myself on the side of the church in case i i lose my post ah i like being a deacon i like being an elder i like being asked to do things in church i think i better keep quiet just keep quiet those are those are whispers of the devil if you don't get a position in church, serve God elsewhere. God, I'm telling you, God is faithful. God will engage you in his mission. And what is the greatest work? To, uh, to, to work for Christ, to be a witness for Christ, to be a sunbeam for him. And you know, also, as you were talking there, you reminded me of how uh, Martin Luther separated himself from Rome. It was a struggle. But this monk, he is the champion of the reformers. And he he was religious, but he realized that these religious routines and, and, and practices of confessing your sins to a man and all these idols, Martin Luther was heavily weighed in his heart and Martin Luther had to separate himself from Rome. Spiritually, we have to separate ourselves from the Sanhedrin of today. You know, many people, when you speak like that, they say, oh, you, you are critical. Oh, we are haters of the conference. We are this. No, no, no. It's about truth. It's about Christ. If anything that we are doing is the Christ is not centered in his truth and his light for today, especially for today, is not shining. We need to 
turn our faces to where Christ's light is shining, even if it means to join the irregular lines, to work with them, and to uh, to allow God to give us wisdom as to what to do, to go forward. We stay with the Sanhedrin, with their religious, useless religious um, practices. They, they were left. They rejected the light, and therefore darkness hovered over them and the, it is a tragedy because they were walking, they were with Jesus face to face and they rejected him. They separated themselves from God. They committed the unpardon, unpardon, unpardonable sin when they resisted the power of the Holy Spirit, which was revealing to them that Christ was the prophesied Messiah, the sent one to them. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sister Dorothy. Um, you know, the, 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 there are people who deny the work, and but the work will go out. It will, it will go out. You know, we have people sitting in the church, warming the chair, the bench, waiting for potluck, you know, having meetings. And, you know, Sister White says one in 20 um, something. Um, but we want to go out. Um, um, there's a multitude that will leave the church, but then there's a multitude that will come into the church in the last days. Mm. And the, as as Sister Dorothy just said about the ray of light that men refuse, um, will be accepted by others, but great darkness will be said to them. Yeah, so um, we ought to be with God in the light, keeping our eyes on the on the light. Sister Dor um, Kezia, go ahead, please. Thank you, Sister Aline. Yes, I just wanted to, to say we should remember this is a great controversy. We are in, you know, um, we are living in the last days and the enemy is doing all sorts of things to make sure that people will remain asleep in the churches. He is doing everything possible to make sure that these leaders, the leaders who have not repented, the leaders who don't have the light, are working on behalf of, of the enemy to make sure that um, people don't receive the light. You can see it starting from the conferences themselves. They will censor any present truth speaker. They want to censor everybody who stands on the pulpit. You can't have, you can't invite people like Walter Faith. You can't invite people like uh, Stephen Bo. You can't invite all the the uh, people who speak the truth as it is. They are banned from the churches. They they don't want them to come to their churches because they know that these people are bearing the truth of God. We saw it in the um, uh, a, a live example in America. One of the congregations. I think it was a church which was led, um, which had mainly people from um, uh, Mexico, and they had invited uh, Stephen Ball for for a two weeks campaign, and the pastor refused, uh, and they had a business meeting, and uh, they still voted that he should come, and the pastor, you know, refused. He says, "Then you you need to go somewhere. He's not coming into this building," and they ended up. Um, they walked out of that church. He says, if you don't listen to me, then you walk out, you, you choose now whether you're going to stay here. And every member walked out and they went and booked a, a, a hall somewhere so that those series will go ahead. You, you can actually see that pastor was now fighting to get um, the offerings. It, you, you can see that the enemy is at work. I posted um, a, a video which was very, very, you know, um, talking about um, vaccines, uh, which Walter Veith had, had done, and I posted it on a church platform. I tell you, the pastor was, and remember, this is a female pastor, so she was raged. You, you don't post such things on the church platform. Wow. 
I was surprised. I said, sorry, I didn't know that, you know, there were some things which we, we cannot share, which I think is useful information. So you can see this is, it should not take us by surprise. It is the great controversy raging. And the enemy knows that he does not have time. He wants to destroy every good work to make sure that the members will remain asleep. Thank you. Yes, he wants to make sure that we are asleep and not going out to find the truth. Yes, there are many um, churches that, that speak about um, about people who want to come to the church to, to give, um, you know, present truth, but they are, are disregarded. They are, are, are told no, you know, this kind soft words is too, this is not the time. This is not the time for kind soft words. We, we need hard food. You know, we came into the church and we were fed milk. But now you've grown, you, you want something more substantial. You know, leaders, they, I don't know what kind of light is shining on them, but they're not shining it on the people. You know, in the Bible, it tells us about um, woe unto them. And because God is going to come back and say, where's my flock? What have you done with them? You know, people are leaving the church in droves, but it doesn't seem like... Um, not even the pastors or anyone is going out to find them because i mean i've left one church and i've never had anyone to come and ask me are you okay why did you go why did you leave i moved my membership and no one still didn't even um, bat an eyelid so it goes to show you that if you're not hearing the truth and if you're not hearing the word of god you've got to go you've got to move We've got, we cannot sit in, in, in and sleep like others do. We have to hear what God has, has, is saying to the church because he is coming back. And if he's come back and we're not ready, then um, we'll be on to us too. Okay. Um, is there any more comments? Yes, yes, and quickly just to add to what you're saying, it's not saying that we should leave the Seventh Adventist Church. This is a church that God has given the message. But to leave those, uh, um, uh, perhaps those churches where are not presenting the truth, uh, because we cannot just be um, coming to church and there's no revival and reformation. It means that the Holy Spirit, where's the Holy Spirit there? But God has got his people. God has got his people in church. So we need to keep, uh, we need to keep, as you've said, praying and and to have the spiritual um, uh, enlightenment because God is going to lead his people because he's the one who will pick he will gather his stones, no matter where they are, but still remain in the church. Uh, that is all that I was saying. Keep in the church, keep in the faith that God has given us. Don't leave the church to go to other, at other churches. No, the church is sick. We are in the great controversy, right? But God to keep us uh, uh, um, in the truth, in the present truth, and so that we may also be uh, um, um, a people who will, who will present the truth. And of course, the tr this truth that we are talking about is our life, <laughs> our, our life, because God is building a, a people. He's building, uh, he's, he's reproducing his character in us. We have to be peculiar people, peculiar. So um, in, in doing so, we have to keep our minds on Jesus Christ, also encouraging one another. Because pe some people can be so discouraged when they see these things in the church. And they leave the church. They actually leave the church and join other churches. But that should not be so with us. And it is going to be in there. It was in Christ's time that Christ gathered his stones together. They had one purpose. They had the same mind and the same purpose. So as we. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sister Hope. I stand corrected. Yes, we must not leave the remnant church because this is God's last day church. This is the church that that tells the truth, that knows the truth. There's no other church 
that will give the the truth and on all the adulterated truth the truth is um the truth is what what god is is telling us that we must have you know um the church yes is sick but leaving the seventh day adventist church to go into another church is is death you know um i know people who have moved from um the the one church and gone into another church and they are lost because of the things that you see them do they say that you know in that church it's more exciting it's more that we are restricted in our church there's things that we can't do and and you know they 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 want more excitement but god is not it's not about excitement god is about truth god is about how we live god is about how we 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 portray him and have his character in us and and how we would perceive to others oh do we want to go on this side of the fence or do we want to go on the other you know um sister dorcas go ahead then sister ruby thank you thank you sister Aileen. i just want to to give a testimony that uh, what sister hope is saying is true oh this thing is happening in every church, in every Seventh Day Adventist church. It's happening. There are those who want to proclaim the truth, and there are those who are just there to distract God's people from reaching their goal. So it also happened to me when I, especially, there was no prayer group in the in the mornings. Or, or in the evening or in the any time during the day there was no or no prayer band so we said we have to do that prayer to have the prayer band and uh, we started the prayer band and the few people they were coming and uh, when they saw that uh, we were not giving up. We continued to do that. They started to to form their own prayer group. We don't know where they they are meeting and where what they are praying for. And when it comes to to church, when they say we are having the garden of prayer, they will ask people for prayer requests. When people bring up their prayer requests. When the person is about to pray, they will say, we are running out of time. We don't have to pray for everything. They just pray for one or two things. And the rest, they say, they will pray for it during the, the week. And they don't want to, to pray together with others. They just want to pray on their own. So when these things were happening, they are still happening. I thought to myself, this is not right. If we say we have prayer requests, we want to give God prayer requests, why do we limit God to say that we don't have enough time to pray for every prayer request which have been brought? So we are going to pray during the week. The two, only two people are allowed to to pray for those things and the others they don't know when they are praying and what if they've prayed for it or not so i just said to myself why should i keep on forcing these people to to do whatever they don't want to do but i know that if we give everything to God. If we whatever we give to God, God will is the one who answers our prayers. So we are not to limit him. <laughs> that the prayers are too many. You can't you can't handle them. We will give him some of them another day. I just thought it's not right. It's better for me to go where I know that I will be praying. He, 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 and he, I know that God will be answering my prayer. No one will be saying, oh, this one is praying 
for this and that. He, we mustn't give so and so to to the chance to pray or this and that. The people they are just against each other. They will say, "Oh, who said this? Who said that?" And they will be fighting for positions. So, I thought it would be better to stay without any position and praying to God earnestly, not trying to please any people. So there was a, when I said that to myself that oh I must separate myself from all these things. So there was another verse which I read which was telling me that I mustn't uh, uh, separate myself from from them. I will be putting myself on danger, all this and that. But today I want to thank God for this paragraph which we have just read. It has just explained exactly what was going in my what is going at the at the at this time. So I will be in the church, but not of that church. Whatever they are teaching, the false teachings which they are teaching people, I won't be uh, listening to those teachings. I'll be following the the truth, what we are doing on this platform. This is this platform, it includes most of the churches. So I thank God for this platform that God raised this platform for times like this, so that when these churches are turning against these people, honest people, chasing them away from the churches, we have another church to go. So I want to thank God, really. Let us not lose hope, not let us dis get discouraged of what is happening in the churches. The, the, the gospel is being fulfilled what happened before is happening today to us. So we thank God for this platform, really. Let's continue to encourage each other to come and worship God in truth and in spirit. Let us not get discouraged about what is happening in churches. We must know that it must happen. So when it happens, God is there for us. He has been there for others who, who went before us. So today it's our turn. Let's keep on holding and keep on worshiping God. Amen. Amen, Sister Dorcas. Amen. Thank you for that beautiful speech. Thank you. Yes, you know, um, prayer is speaking to God. When people are telling you that you, you know, you can't pray, this, that's, that's, that's not good. Yeah, you're telling them that you don't talk, don't speak to God, don't 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 um open your heart and your mind to God. Remember, our salvation is at stake. We have to tell God how we are, how we feel. You know, the He said that we must come boldly before His throne of grace. I don't, I cannot ask another person to go and speak on my behalf to God, like um in the Catholic Church where they have the. The, the confession box that they're speaking to a man. I need to speak to, to God. I have to go directly to him because that's what he says. Come boldly before the throne of grace. Um, Sister Ruby, do you still want to speak? Oh, yeah, I was just going to say, um, good morning, everyone, that um, in most of the churches, um, I mean, the truth is not being um, preached. And so for most of us who believe in present truth and are hungering for more present truth, we're, we're just going to have to read for ourselves. And because there's nowhere to go, we don't have a lot of choice as to where to go. We can't not it's not easy to find a church where present truth is being preached. And so I'm happy for you, Arlene, that you could at least find one that is not very far from your previous church that you could go. But I think um, churches that allow present truth to be preached from the pulpit, they are far and few between. So 
for 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 most of us um we just have to stay in our churches and um uh, in our current churches and just just live the truth and sort of be a silent preacher and hope that by you living the truth um whatever reform whether it's dress reform or your health reform people will eventually become curious and and um ask you questions and um because yeah and um yeah just preach the truth silently wherever you are planted if you don't have a choice of going to another church where present truth is being preached and um hopefully by the light that you shine um others will see and come get curious and find out and uh you hopefully will be able to influence them or to point them to your source of truth. Um, thank you. That's all I wanted to say. Amen. Yes. You know, it is it is quite difficult to find um, a church that um, speaks present truth. Um, but, you know, we cannot run around and, 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 and find one. We'd be wasting time feed ourselves feed ourselves there's so much youtube um that we can go on you know that speaks present truth stephen bohr is on um you know even amazing facts you know um yesterday brother brother desire said you know that we should invite people to um the the the, the prayer prayer retreat ministry here you know and this platform and it just prompted me yesterday to, um, to start texting everybody on on my on my group to to go to come and 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 hear the word and and be informed. And I'm I'm talking about people who don't um, who are not in the faith. You know, it really impressed me to 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 I and I had at the beginning of my email my text I had to say to them I'm sorry this is a long text but I had to say and please read it to the end people need to know that they need to hear the word this is now we are in the last days and we need it now sister Ho go ahead please and could you pray after please thank you and and quickly to say so because uh you know the enemy goes it's a great controversy he goes in everything we have to realize, we have to ask God to give us spiritual uh, eyes to see. Uh, because sometimes, sis, we could have also the present truth on uh, on this media, on, uh, on uh, YouTube, but we forget to congregate together. Uh, yes, there, there are times like maybe people who are sick, they cannot go out uh, and they can only stay in. The messages are there. But for us, as the word says in uh, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one, uh, exhorting one another. And so much the more as ye see the day approaching as we see Christ is approaching, the enemy wants to segregate us. That we, uh, okay, we, 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 uh, the church is not pre presenting the truth. Let me stay at home. Let, as our sister says, if you cannot find a church, stay there. Congregate, be a light. But never, we should never forsake coming together. Never. Because that's where the enemy gets us. We need one another. We need to encourage one another. Okay. Uh, that is all that I wanted to say. And quickly to say in verse 26 also says, For we, for if we sin willfully after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, then there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins. So it all comes together. Christ. He is our sacrifice. Christ is he, our salvation. Christ is he who is in our midst. But still, we have to remember, sin is that which separates us from Christ. But to pray, to repent, so that we can come together, regardless of the forces that are outside there, 
each one of us indeed to examine ourselves whether we are in the faith. Let us pray. Our kind and heavenly Father, we are so thankful, we are so grateful for the moment you've given us. Nothing escapes you, nothing is new under the sun. But as we come, Father, there's much going on in your church. But you promised that no gates of hell will prevail against your church. Help us, strengthen us, increase our faith that we may not lose sight of one another. You went to the garden of Gethsemane. You never went alone. You had your three disciples and no one should be on their own. You want us to be gathered together with one mind and one purpose. Although they slept, Father, your prayer, Jesus, is what woke them up from their slumber as the spirit worked and prevailed. Help us. We are a sleeping church. Admittedly, forgive us, but let the spirit of the living God awake us so that we may stand in these evil days and give the loud cry. That's the message you've given us. You say those who will have the patience of the, or, or the patience of your word, you keep us in the hour of temptation that is going to come upon the world and us who are in the world. But you've told us, hold on fast to that which you have given us, that no one should take our crown. There's a crown of righteousness with all its gems. We are praying, Lord, have mercy, that we may look to you and no one else. Thanking you for your maid servant who has led us. Thanking you for all the messages and the testimonies. As we leave this platform, we pray, Father, that the spirit of the living God may still continue to fall afresh upon us as you've given us duties that are upon us that we may serve you. This is not about serving man, but serving Christ. Thanking you for your churches, uh, your church that is there. And we know, Father, Lord, you'll gather your people, but gather us in faith, the faith that works by love and purifies the soul. Grant us your mercies today. Bless us as we leave one another, but praying for one another. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Sister Hope, for your beautiful prayer. Thank you. Now we, and thank you everyone um, that came today. Um, and thank you for for putting the, 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 um, words on the screen i'm sorry i didn't even ask for it but thank you very much i'm now i hand over to the platform manager i'm not sure who that is if it's brother desires thank you or is it tutley twins i can see they're back yes we're back, we're back. <laughs> welcome back thank you, thank you. Well, I don't say Brother Desire. I'm not sure the prayer, min prayer minister is at the bottom. Uh, thank you, Sister Arlene, for taking the um, the chapter today. And uh, thank you, everyone, that's joined. At um, 12 o'clock, it would be midday prayer. 6.30 will be song service. We encourage people to join the song service because we don't have a song service when it's just us two at on it. <laughs> And uh, at 7 o'clock will be another timely message from uh, Elder Robert, uh, Tutor in Puri. So we're looking forward to that. There's the really good messages this week. And, um, you know, uh, we've been blessed. Uh, so have a nice day, everyone. And see you all later, by God's grace. Have a good day. Amen. 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 Good day. Bye, everyone.